Hi there, today we are going to talk about reducing fractions, using mul unit multipliers, and unit conversion, all at the same time. Wow. There are multiple ways to reduce fractions, and I'm sure that most of you know those. Um, one, of course, is a very popular one. It's called prime factorization, where you prime factor the numerator. For instance, 16 be the numerator, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And then you prime factor the denominator, which in this case is 2 times 2 times 3 times 3, or 4 times 9 is 36. And then you eliminate the commons from the top and the bottom. Well, and there's a 2 in the top, 2 in the bottom, 2 in the top, 2 in the bottom. What you're left with is 2 times 2 over 3 times 3, or 4 over 9. And that's reduced form. Now we can use the same numbers and we can do this using downward division. Downward division, I taught you this year, um, is very popular being used all over the United States, so this is not uncommon. Um, first of all, you would set your 16 and 36. Remember to put this in here to remind yourself this is a fraction that we're reducing. They're both even, so we divide both of them by 2. 16 divided by 2 is 8. 36 divided by 2 is 18. And because they're still both even, we would have to divide them again by 2. And you get 4 and 9. Now, the only number that goes into 4 and 9 is 1. So you end up with 4 and 9. And that, coincidentally, is the same thing that we got when we used prime factorization. So it works. It works both ways. Um, there's one more way that you can use. It's called uh, using a large common factor. If you can see... Uh, a bigger number that will go into both the numerator and denominator, you can go ahead and divide by it. And in this case, I can easily see that 4 goes into 16 and 4 goes into 36. And when I divide the top and the bottom both by 4, I get 4 ninths. Coincidentally, the same number I got from prime factorization and downward division. All three of these work. It just depends on your comfort level with them, which one is the most comfortable for you to use. Okay, canceling. Canceling is a method that works well when you have more than one fraction. That works well with just one fraction. Uh, but canceling is something I like to use when you are multiplying and you have more than one fraction. So, for instance, here's an example. I used canceling to reduce this fraction, these two fractions so that I could come out with a reduced fraction answer. I could have just multiplied 6 times 7 and got 42 over 7 times 9, which is 63, and then started reducing. But I didn't necessarily want to do that. I wanted to come out with the lowest fraction possible if I could. So I saw that 7 went into 7, you know, both of these. So I crossed them out. I crossed this one out and put some 1, and I crossed this one out and put 1. And then I noticed that there was a 3 in both of these. So I took 3 into 6 and got 2, 3 into 9 and got 3. Well, I'm left with 2 times 1 on the top and 1 times 3 on the bottom, which gives me 2 thirds, which is uh, pretty reduced. Okay, let's try this one together here, okay? Now, if you look at this, you can see there's a 5 here, and if you can take 5 into 10, which I think you can, we end up with 5 goes into 5 one time, 5 goes into 10, 2. And if you look real closely, you'll notice that the 3 also would go into 21. So 3 goes into 3 one time, 3 goes into 21 seven times. You are left with 2 times 1 on the top over 7 times 1 on the bottom, which is 2 over 7, and that is pretty darn reduced. Works pretty well, actually. Now, this type of cross-canceling actually helps us to do unit conversion, so that's why I wanted to go over it first. Now, the question is, 3 feet equals how many inches? Yeah, I know, you can take 3 times 12 and so can I, but I started with something easy so that you could kind of see it in your head. So we're going to set this up so that we can use unit conversions. All right, now to do this, we're going to put 3 feet which is the original measure, and we're going to put over 1. And then we're going to put 12 inches is 1 foot. And then we reduce by or convert by reducing the commons. 
There's feet here and feet here. We want to leave the inches in because we're trying to get to inches. So now, once we have this part done and we've gotten rid of the feet, now we can just do the multiplication. 3 times 12, which was what you wanted to do in your head anyway, right? And 3 times 12 inches over 1 equals 36 inches. Now, there's some kind of cool notes here that might help you out. Remember, you're going to cross out the same units that appear on the top and the bottom with these. Note that the unit you're converting will be, for this problem, will be on its top with its equivalent original on the bottom. So, you know, 12 inches is 1 feet. We're trying to get 2 inches. Okay? All right. And then you just do the math. You end up with 36 inches which you already knew that that was going to be 36 inches. Okay, so what if we want to know how many yards there are in 90 feet? Well, this time we're starting with feet and we're going to yards. So I'm thinking maybe this one might be set up just a little differently. So we're going to set it up. We have 90 feet over 1 and 1 yard is 3 feet. Okay, well, that's not too bad. So, your equivalent original amount is up here and down here. You're going to cross both of those out because you want them to go away. Leaves you with the yards. And on this one, you're going to end up with a division problem because you have 90 times 1 yard all over 3. Do the math, and you end up with 30 yards. 90 divided by 3 is 30. Notice that we keep this measurement. If you start dropping those off, you're going to get confused and you're going to lose them. And then you will not have the right answer. Okay, let's do one more. How many feet in 220 yards? Okay, well, we start the same way we had before. We have 220 yards over 1. 3 feet over 1 yard. Cross out the yards they go away, we're left with 220 times 3 feet over 1. Do the math, you get 660 feet. Okay, let that soak in for a second. Now, we're going to do just a little bit different use of conversions. It works pretty well, but you're going to have to listen and, and copy everything down carefully so that you understand what this is. We're going to look at a different use. If Marvin can sprint 8 yards per second, now we want to keep track of the per, per second. How many feet per second is that? Feet. We are looking for feet. They give us yards, we're looking for feet. So our conversion answer should be in feet form. So we say 8 yards in 1 second per Basically, in math language, means divide, okay? So it's going to be on the bottom. 8 yards per 1 second times 3 feet in 1 yard. We're getting rid of yards. Cross them out. We're left with 8 times 3 feet, and feet is what we want, over 1 second. Can't lose that. That's a part of the answer. We will get feet per second. Okay, and if you do the math, 8 times 3, and you get 24 feet per second. This little line right here should be read as per. That makes sense. Okay, and look at another one. While Gina slept, her heart beat 72 beats per minute. At this rate, using conversions, compute the number of beats per hour. Now, we know she beat 72 per minute. Now we want to know what it is per hour. Now, if you think about it for a second, you should be getting a bigger answer because we're going for a longer period of time. So, if we set it up, 72 beats per 1 minute times 
60 minutes in one hour. Ooh, there was a shift. Okay, now we're no longer worried about eliminating the beats, we're worried about eliminating the minutes. So now we have 72 beats per one minute, 60 minutes per one hour. So now we're going to eliminate these guys and do the math, basically. Okay, so you end up with 72 beats times 60. We want to convert the minutes. So it's really important that we get rid of minutes. We don't want minutes in our answer. So 72 beats times 60 over 1 times 1 hour. 72 times 60 is, I did the math over here, 4,320 beats in 1 hour. So the answer is 4,320 beats per hour. Okay. One last, I just thought it would be fun kind of thing. Okay, one last look. If Gina's heart rate while sleeping is seven, still 72 beats per minute, then how many beats per second is that? Now, is, the, is our final answer gonna be smaller than the last one or bigger? Yeah, if it's a per second answer, it's gonna be small. It's gonna be small, because the other was per hour. That's gonna be big. So here we go again. We have 72 beats in one minute. One minute is 60 seconds. We're getting rid of the minutes because we want seconds. Okay, so 72 beats times one, because we got rid of the minutes, over one times 60 seconds. We have to keep the seconds. Now we do the division. And when we divide, we take 72 divided by 60, and guess what we get? 1.2 beats per second. Ta-da! Well, I know that was probably just a little bit confusing, but I sure hope you understood it. And if you have questions, ask in class, please. Thanks. Bye.